Welcome back to World Drum Club, everyone. I'm Kalani, your host and teacher here. And this lesson is about Wa Wong Ko playing on three drums, tuning the drums, and also playing over the uh, uh, rumba clave, which I'll get into a little. And my goal for this lesson is to introduce some ideas to you and point you in the right direction so you can um, do your own homework and go deeper into it and learn from some of the masters. Um, I am not a master of Wa Wong Ko, but I can help you if you're on the journey towards them. Uh, so thanks for stopping here at World Drum Club. First of all, let me talk about the tuning. Uh, I've got obviously three drums here. Tumba on my left, uh, about an E flat roughly tuning. My conga or middle drum, um, or in this case, would, we would call this the maybe the tres golpes if we're playing, you um, know, in, in a you know one per player. But at any rate, the the conga, the middle drum uh, on my right, tuned to about a G, and then the quinto, in, of course, in the center, tuned to about a C. So I've got kind of a, a C minor, a C minor chord uh, in the first inversion. We could call it. Uh, to be music theory about it, but um, that's that's what I've got going here. So I've got a fourth between the middle and the high drum Roughly and then I've got a major third between the middle and the low drum And then a minor six between these two That's what I was going for they they're changing a little Because they are natural skinheads, but that's the tuning now as far as the wall one co There's a million ways to play it. I'm going to show you, you know a basic way We'll break it down, uh, and then we'll talk about the clave and where that goes and how that, you know, it all fits together. All right, so uh, in the Wawon Ko, there's kind of two main things happening. There would be one player playing the, the tumbao, the lower drum, uh, One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and just a, it's just the that note. Let's call it four. Let's count it one, two, three, four. Uh one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then of course the response to that or the, the filling in happens on the higher drum. Um, in this case, I'm going to use the quinto, but of course that would normally be happening on the, the tumba would be on the low drum And then the response would be on the the middle drum and then the soloing would happen on the high drum But in this case, I'm I'm playing it this way uh, Because I'm putting an accent which will relate to the clave. So I'll explain that later So that's what's happening down here the high drum of course we're playing our answer uh, filling in every other hit of the of the low drum, um, and that sounds like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four. And they were putting this this bass tone, but I'll get to that a little bit later. So the basic skeletal pattern, the melody. Is one two three four one two and 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 three one two and three four one two and three four one two and three four. All right, so that's our little conversation. There's some variations to that. Uh, some groups really play the first note of that. So you might hear that, like just the first note, uh, but often if you think about Wawon Ko, most of the time you're going to hear these two notes. So it's a one, two, and three, four, 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 one, two, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four. Let's go to the overhead view. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two. Okay, so that's our foundation. Now there's another note I'm gonna place over here, and this is gonna be opposite what's happening on these two drums, and this note's gonna outline that uh, tresillo or 
what some people call the bomba rhythm or just aligning with the clave, um, the second note of the first three notes of the clave. So bat, 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 bat. Except it's room clave. <laughs> All right, so listen for that. I'm going to put these together now. And um, let's go to the side view and I'll count it off and let's play. And I'm going to put on the other mic. One, two, one, two, three, hey. So now, let's talk clave. Rumba clave is the one that's a little tricky for some people. It's got the third note uh, a little bit delayed than the typical son clave, which is the one everybody's familiar with. So the son clave, dot, 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 right? That's the clave everybody knows and loves. Uh, rumba clave, a little bit different. We're going to delay the third note just by a half a beat. So that sounds like, I'm going to break it down. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, so now, the thing that's a little counterintuitive to some people about the way the clave fits with the wawonko is that you would think that the clave is lining up with the uh, ba 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 And there are some people that play it that way, and it can be played that way, but traditionally, it is the opposite. It's on the other side. So, the clave actually lines up with this low note over here. So I'm going to go to the overhead view and I'm going to sing the clave, the rumba clave. You sing it along with me and just listen and listen to how this note on the low drum over here uh, is going to line up with the second note of the clave. Ba, 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 right? And then this stuff is going to be happening kind of opposite to that. So let's go. One, two, one, two, three, four, ba, 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 Right. Let's go. Um, let's go now to the other mic. It's a little more musical. The other microphone. It's got a little bit of reverb on it. And I'm just gonna play. I'll play around a little bit. Uh, and there's some, you know, variations. Just want you to listen to it. Now, before we go, I want to recommend that you oh like, subscribe, do all that stuff, of course. Um, but a couple groups that you want to look into. Uh, the, uh, first of all, Los Papines, look into them, Muñoquitos de Matanzas, and uh, Grupo 
Folklorico Nacional de Cuba. All right, look into those uh, groups, and I will leave the names below. Uh, you can Google it. Uh, but really do a lot of listening um, with, with those groups. Also, uh, Patato, Valdez, uh, Totico, Rumba, Rumberos, Totico, Isus, Rumberos, I think. There's a, there's a classic album called. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of that on there. But anything that's like rumba, classic, folkloric rumba music. Uh, not ballroom, dance rumba. That's rumba. <laughs> not rumba. Rumba. Not the thing that sweeps your floor. <laughs> uh, all right. So we're, I'm going to leave you with that. And I hope this is helpful. Um, and just, just try to, if you're new to this, just try to repeat the clave, the rumba clave, while I'm playing. And that goes for any of the music that you listen to. A good exercise for you is to just sing the clave, tap the clave along with the music you're listening to, and then just absorb that and see how it all fits together. That's gonna help you increase your understanding and feel feeling for where everything's lining up. And that's really a, a, an important first step before you start to play the music is just understand the music and feel the music. All right, that's my best advice I could give you. Thanks for joining me in this lesson. And um, I, like I said, I'm gonna turn the other mic on and uh, play for a little bit. All right, thanks. <laughs>